we can stop all these issues, but it does take work. I could have been a millionaire a long time ago, but I don't want to do the work. And see, people want a magical solution, and a magical solution is nice, but you still have to do the work. You understand that? Enjoy the show. Uh, Sarah, hey, Sarah, this is your this is your truck, huh, man? Well, it's the organization, man. The charity's truck, man. I'm just the keeper of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's I see it. I see it on the computer. I see it on Facebook. What's that number? That people call that number. That's yeah. How they... So one eight hundred eight six one sixty five forty one. Been the number for ten eight years. So yeah, that's well, show it again. That's man. a solid one eight hundred eight six one sixty five forty one. 24 hours a day, call us. I Actually, yesterday a lady called the number. You you had us on TV I, I, yesterday. I was on she, TV talking, and people they wanted they need help. This other guy's supposed yeah. to call you, and I uh, hope I forgot to bring his phone number. But the main yeah. thing is that when we gonna end this crime, man? Real soon, real soon. I mean, I, seriously. And I know people been saying you've been saying that forever. Understand how deep this is, what we going uh -huh. through, and so it takes at the grassroots level. You got to really get down there and build the roots, so that eventually, when you see the tree, you know it's anchored through some real strong roots. So that's why it's taking so long. But uh, we got President Obama in there for the second term, so I'm excited about having that federal stability. Now we're going to present to him a plan for 30,000 jobs across America, and we're going to see how that goes and where that takes us. Yeah, but I know you you have two things. Poverty creates crime. Whatever there's Whatever there's part, well, well, let's get no, let's, let's set it up first. Whatever there's poverty, <laughs> there's crime. There's the potential, the, but there's greater, a, the it's increased a, right. potential. I grew up, and I was telling some people downtown. I didn't know we was poor in Cabrini Green. Right. I didn't know it. It was clean. You know what I mean? It wasn't bad. So poverty doesn't necessarily in this day and age it does because with TV and 300 channels, you're shown that you're poor. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? so right. You know you're poor. You, you know where you are. Back right. then, you didn't know that. You yeah, know. as a kid, you know, you, if you got a little money, it's fine. But what happened is that, okay, then we it's a values problem too. That that's the key. I know it's a key because people, the, it's like a chicken and egg thing. If you give poor people values growing up, <laughs> if they're still poor, will they still act like crazy people? <clears throat> See, and I contend no. When you understand human behavior, everyone is striving to attain something. You know what I mean? So even the ones who pants are sagging down, it might be attention, you know, drawing attention to me. And then you got to ask the question, why? What, where is the deficit at? Why do they want that attention? And so at the end of the day, it's all about individual behavior. And, and I'm encouraged that we're going to create a different environment in these neighborhoods where people get the attention that they're looking for and that they feel valued and important. Because that's what it boils down to. It, it, it's sad. Well, what, you know, when you, when you inter interact with people, it's, it's so sad. I'm not, I don't have the temperament to really interact with a lot of people. I just don't. <clears throat> I mean, and a lot of us, those of us who don't have the temperament to, uh, to interact with the underclass, we move. Mm -hmm. We, we move away. We, we out there in Olympia right. Fields and Madsen and whatever, right. you know. What I always say to people like that, then you put your resources back where you want to see change occur. So if you live in Olympia Fields, South Harlem, whatever, what are you doing to sow financial seeds into organizations or structures in the high crime or high impacted area? That's and they say, well, if I live in a like many, this, this is for our computer, I mean the internet audience, mm -hmm. a lot of African Americans live in the south suburbs. They don't live in the south side of Chicago, they live in the south suburbs. So they say, I live in, in, in uh, which, what's the town, the South Holland. I don't care what goes on in Inglewood. Right. I really don't. The, the, the challenge for that, unless you're going to never come to Chicago, uh, it's like an investment. You want to sow those seeds so when you do come to the city, you're safe. <laughs> so but that's you, you let's, 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 let's put the African American community against the Jewish community. The Jewish community, as the intellectuals would tell me, the intellectuals say the Jewish community, ha Jewish community has cultural capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We as a, we're former slaves. We don't have the cultural capital as the Jews. They got cultural capital and money. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, here's what I was saying. And most of all, cultural capital. Here's what I say about that because you can have capital, but unless it's invested and, and used, then what good is it just sitting there? Well, they have and cultural so capital. Yeah, we, go no, ahead. We have, we have a lot of cultural capital. We, you see the activists and people, but what we don't have is the layers of support to take the poor person who's feeling isolated and alone and link them to those uh, social capitalists and uh, African Americans. Yeah, but then they know they're Jewish people, right? Mm hmm. Oh, uh, but a lot of us, yeah, but a lot of us, we, we, we black, we African American, we're colored, we're biracial, we, we so many, we're American. I don't want to be African American, I just want to be an American. Jewish people know they're Jewish. We're confused people because of our DNA and our, and our history of slavery and so on. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. It's by design. Look, America, <laughs> and I love America, you know, 
locks up more people than anyone else in the world. All right, right. right. we do. America does. jails are full. So of now people. understand this: if America is the gold standard for in incarceration, who in America is being locked up more than anyone else? <laughs> there you, there you have it. After right. America. So having said that. If America is the gold standard of locking people up and blacks are the gold standard in America being locked up, there are people benefiting. And that's what we got to never take for granted. There are people who need the disorder and dysfunction to continue to occur in destabilized neighborhoods so that they can continue to fill prisons. Right now in Illinois, we're battling whether or not to close prisons downstate. The governor, um, they, Quinn, we, is. We don't have any money. To close the, the state is broke. Right. We right. got to cut the budget, uh -huh. meaning close prisons, but, but, but prisons make money for those small towns. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. If you listen to the people in those small towns, they're saying, no, cut somewhere else. Right. We need our prisons. Right. How else are we going to send our children to college to right. get a good education? So essentially, translation here, that means those young people in, in Chicago keep locking them up so they can keep coming downstate, being in the prisons. And Jesse Jackson just highlighted about the phone uh, situation where you got certain phone companies that monopolize the system. And so therefore, you're paying 15 times what you should be paying just to talk to your loved one. So it's a lot of people feeding off that cash cow. Of well, prisons. they've always made money off of African Americans because, of the, for, of course, for 300 years, slavery, sure. 100 sure. years of illegal sure. segregation. So, so I say that so we don't be beat ourselves down. Right. Understand that there's people who benefit from our conditions being the way they are and they get us to hate each other there you go i mean i, I mean i i, I mean i point. can develop i mean and, it, and the problem is very simple is if you are no the problem is not simple <laughs> it's really, actually it is this go ahead. is easy go ahead. This, and me and my wife debate that all the time this is easy the hard part is in in your head <laughs> in, in the viewers right. head, because we make things more difficult than it has to be if you love people like you're supposed to, then in action you'll show that. What you don't see is you don't see love. Now, if you start saying why they don't love you, now it gets confusing because you, you broke in my house because you did this, you looked at me wrong. So now we get into all the other stuff. But at the end of the day, we got to get in a position to love each other. That's true. But we, we but African Americans, we've been taught to disdain each other. And let's face it, you got the bourgeois class against the underclass right. and all this now, kind of stuff. Now, when you say taught, Mark, what I really believe what you're saying is the conditions are ripe for us to behave that way. Because they know white person come and saying, let me teach you, this is how you hate well, each other. They set up the conditions right. that allow you to behave that way. Well, you know, so, I mean, the condition is like, it's like, I was listening to a radio show on WVN Radio, and they, all the, the guests and the, the hosts, they're all educated people. Mm -hmm. Probably make six figures, mm -hmm. or a little bit under six figures, whatever, right? And so they was, and the host was saying, some people listen to our show and they say, I can't identify with these people because they're educated. Mm -hmm. Most African Americans, like most Americans, are not educated, okay? The masses. With masses. Now, now, remember, the poor whites, are getting, the poor conservative Republican whites are getting their heads bumped mm -hmm. by the larger rich Republicans. Mm -hmm. So we're all conditioned to think a certain way. Right. African Americans are conditioned to distrust each other, and this is why we can't end right. this crime and, and, I and guess, this foolishness. I guess the other part to that, just like if you look at this neighborhood, this is a clean, it smells good out here, it's fresh. It's Sunday peaceful. morning. Sunday but, but, morning, but come I'm on. Just saying, it's the people. It's the behaviors of the people. Right. Behavior is the mindset. And so that's what you're really dealing with, whether you're a, old, a poor white person in rural America, whether you're an urban person in the middle of the crime, uh, violence plague neighborhoods. But since we don't like each other, if you're, a, if you're a poor African American part of the underclass, you throw paper on the ground, mm -hmm. you play loud music, you break into folks' home me, right? because you don't like you don't like another Negro. I say I don't like myself, I don't like that Negro. It means it's, it's self hatred. It's self hatred. But the way to really mm -hmm. stop is with the children. How do we get the, like I said, all of my show is very basic. How do we get these mothers, <laughs> going to the homes of these mothers right. and these grandmothers to raise their, especially right. their little boys properly? How do we do this, man? Right. Now, let me clarify when you say that about women, because because like I said, I came over to your side with that. The mothers the are the reason, first teacher of the children. There, there you go. The reason we say women is because, unfortunately, the man has dropped the ball. So that's what Mark really saying. The man can't be counted on, so we got to do and the more and the, the And the women, so ra they means. raise baby boys. Sure. What they call They raise, uh, sure. you know. Sure, we know we got to give props to the women when we and they do it because they're they're that. controlled by a higher force unseen hand bumping their head more emotions yeah more emotions so the black woman in particular play a vital role in stopping a lot of what we deal with but when you come in that house you, you see the young boy he's five years old he's 10 years old he's reading at a, he's 10 years old reading at a, a first grade level mm -hmm. Man, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Sure it is. So where's the layers of support to that, Mark? You know what I mean? So, for instance, right now I have a 14-year-old who's expecting a baby. So now, outside of what a young I lady, already lady, do, Young lady you're working with. No, this is a young man. 
Oh, the, the young man. man. He's yeah. 14. 14. He's, one, he's one of the people that you're mentoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, he's going to be a dad soon. Yeah. So I'm going to, and I told him in January, him and I are about to set up a separate day outside the regular program because he's going to need intense guidance. So that's extra work. You know what I mean? I wish we had others who could step up and do it. But if we did, they don't have a relationship with him that can get him to really learn. But where the church is at, man? That's what the they church there. road. They, they are, are they doing the church it? church is everywhere. You know, the problem with the church is we're not coordinated. And okay. You have to be coordinated in this environment because of the, the enemy that you're up against. So you can't just be out there a lone ranger doing your own thing. Like me. <laughs> yeah, well, you, a, you got the media. You got the camera. I'm a lone ranger. So you're yeah. touching people who yeah. can click and watch and get inspired and like they're doing. They've been calling. They call you, so, right. So that, that's helpful. I'm talking about the churches. Now, South Shore, we was in South Shore yesterday, and they really agreed and took on the mindset that if we get 30 churches in zip code 60649 to agree to being on duty the same day each month, first Monday, third, Tuesday, whatever. We're going to have 30 days of spiritual coverage inside 60649. Now watch this, Mark. The sad part about it, they said, what we go do? <laughs> so even though you're on duty, I know that term is foreign to us. What we go do? So what we told them is, to make it simple, we just want you to be on the prayer hotline so people can call the hotline. Now, we want more than that, but that's just so that they can wrap their Keep arms it around it. Keep it simple. That's what you do for one hour on your one day out of the month. Be on the prayer line and take calls from people. Well, let's, let's track back. I mean, backtrack. Tell the people, see, you have a military background. Sure. So or 14, your organ years. 14 years in the military. So your organization is based off what you learned in the military. 